Hey guys, this is God of Politics, and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be doing another election prediction, and this election prediction is for Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Now, it obviously looks like Joe Biden is going to be the nominee now. It's pretty much 100%, unless maybe he does something stupid at a debate, or just the gaffes continue to the point where voters will turn against him, which I don't think is going to happen. He is easily going to win the primary, and the math just adds up completely to him, and not for Bernie Sanders. I'm not even sure I'll be doing another election prediction for Bernie Sanders just because of the fact he has pretty much no chance for the nominee, and he might even drop out by next week. But right now, we'll be doing the election prediction for Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. We have seen a lot of breaking news lately, the Dow Jones especially, as well as all the other stocks pretty much, have gone into a bear market for the first time in 11 years. The 11-year run of economic positivity, economic growth has ended now. We see that the Dow Jones today fell 10%. It's now down pretty much to the levels that it was when Trump came into office. And whether this is Trump's fault or not, I think there is some blame to be put on Trump, maybe for his lack of preparedness, lack of consistencies and how to deal with it. Whether there is much blame to put on Trump, a stock market crash, a recession, which is pretty likely, I think, is going to hurt Trump. Whether it's his fault or not, it is going to hurt Trump. And so we'll be doing the election prediction based off of that pretty much. So we'll start with these safe states as always. I think these states are still going to be safe. North Dakota, South Dakota, all of Nebraska except for the second district. Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, West Virginia, Indiana, Missouri, and that, and Utah. And that is going to be it. That's 125 safe electoral votes for Donald Trump. And then for Joe Biden, he would win all of these states safe. Hawaii safe, Illinois, New York, Vermont, Maine's 1st District, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C. So that puts Joe Biden at 183 safe electoral votes to Donald Trump's 125 safe electoral votes. Now we'll do the likely lean and tilt states. We'll start on the East Coast this time. I do think that Maine at large is going to go likely to Joe Biden, and Maine's second district is going to go likely to Donald Trump. Just due to the fact that we saw in 2016, Maine at large was within three points. I think it was around three. I think it was three points for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, and he isn't doing that well here in terms of the polling and the approval ratings. The approval ratings aren't looking too good, as well as the polls for the Senate race. And he will still win Maine's second district, which was the surprise of the night last time in 2016. I mean, obviously, among all the other surprises, but it was one of these surprises then that the main second district went to Donald Trump. And I think it will go again, but by a likely margin this time. And overall, Maine's at large will also go by a likely margin. New Hampshire will go by a lean margin. I think that Donald Trump could easily win this state, but I just don't think that his approval rating actually... I do think that this would be a tilt margin just due to the fact that Hillary Clinton only lost it within a couple thousand votes last time. I'm almost going to put this on the verge of a lean margin. I think it'll be around a 1% victory for Joe Biden. He didn't do very well here in the primaries. A lot of the Bernie voters might not turn out to vote for him, but he do well, did do well in places like Maine. He did well with the working class voters, and so I think it's on the cusp of a lean to a tilt margin, but I still do think that it's going to go to Joe Biden regardless. We'll skip the Rust Belt states. We'll get on here to Virginia. Virginia, I think, is going to be a likely margin. We saw that Biden blew everybody out of the water here. He won pretty much every single county. I think it was every single county except maybe one county went to Bernie Sanders, one of the college town counties. But we see that Joe Biden's been doing better with working class voters, especially in the Democratic primaries. Some of the voters that went to Donald Trump after Hillary Clinton became the nominee when they had voted for Bernie Sanders. Those voters are now with Joe Biden. They'll be turning out for Joe Biden in the election. They'll be doing that along with the Fairfax counties in northern Virginia that will vote heavily to Joe Biden. The establishment Democrats, that's what Joe Biden is, and he will win the state of Virginia by a likely margin. The state of North Carolina will go by a lean margin. Now, this is a state that went to Donald Trump by five points. They've got a big Senate race here with a not unpopular incumbent senator, and it is going to be a bit closer. I think Tom Tills will probably still end up winning. You'll see that in my Senate prediction, election prediction, which will be out tomorrow. And yeah, so North Carolina, I do think, will go by a lean margin. A lot of these people have been saying that it's been trending blue, but I don't really see that. It went to Joe Biden and Barack Obama in 2008, but went to Romney and Trump. But I think it will be a bit closer this time, but it won't be close enough for the state to go blue. 
Going down to Georgia here. I think some polls have showed it being a larger margin, but I think it will go by a lean margin. People are saying Stacey Abrams was a fluke. I don't think she was entirely a fluke. I think that there are a lot of trends here, especially in the Atlanta suburbs, that have been trending blue. The suburban vote, as well as Joe Biden being able to do well with the rural vote. And this is a state with a high black population, and Joe Biden has been proven that he is able to turn out those voters. Maybe even with Stacey Abrams as the nominee, he could take it a bit further. I do think he'll end up losing the state by about four to five points, but the trends are real in the state, whether you like it or not, and that is going to prove vital in future elections, and I think for this election, it is going to go by a lean margin. We'll go down here to Florida. I think it is going to be a tilt margin to Joe Biden. Joe Biden would undoubtedly do a lot better than Bernie Sanders in this state. Bernie Sanders will not do well. The Latino voters, especially the ones in Miami, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County, as well as not doing well with the working white class voters. Work white working class voters in the panhandle, the voters that will go to Joe Biden by larger margins. And Joe Biden will not win this state, uh, but he will do better than Bernie Sanders would have. But he will lose it by around half a percentage point to one percentage point. We saw Hillary Clinton campaigned here a lot, but was not able to win it. Maybe if the Democrats had run a better candidate in 2018, they could have flipped it, uh, the governor's race. But in terms of the presidential race, I think it is going to be close because it is Florida. And if you're assuming that the economy is not going to be a great position right now, it could be even flipping to the blue column. But as at this point, I will put it at a tilt margin to Donald Trump. Going down here to Texas, I'm going to go along the Sun Belt here. I do think Texas is going to be by a likely margin we saw. I think that this will be around seven to eight points. Some polls have shown it being a larger margin, but Joe Biden was able to win all of the rural counties, and those rural counties do add up while he's also been able to win the counties with large African-American populations, counties like Harris County, Dallas County, those kind of areas. He's been able to maximize the votes in the areas that count, and the Latino voters may turn out not to turn out in, in huge droves for him. Maybe the young voters don't do it either, but Joe Biden has consolidated a base of voters that is going to be vital when it comes election time. Will that flip the state of Texas? No. Will it be closer than it was in 2016? Yes, it'll be closer than it has been in a very long time, and will it won't be as close as the Senate election, I don't think. It is going to be closer, and it is going to prove to be a swing state maybe sometime in the future, maybe the next 10 years, it'll be a true swing state. But for now, it'll still be a likely margin to Donald Trump. The state of Colorado, I think, is going to be a lean margin, and the state of New Mexico, I think, is going to be a likely margin. I think that Colorado is a very socially liberal state, and I think that Joe Biden isn't as socially liberal on a lot of things. He was opposed to abortion at the time. He's against weed legalization. And as of New Mex as with New Mexico, I think Joe Biden being an establishment Democrat will bode well for him there. Just the state that is more democratic in terms of uh, favoring the establishment than Colorado is. And while Gary Johnson did get a large portion of the vote here in 2016, being the governor of the state, I'm not sure that that all of that vote would have necessarily gone to Donald Trump automatically, especially in the state of New Mexico. But I think that in terms of Joe Biden being the nominee here to win New Mexico by a likely margin and Colorado being by a lean margin, the state of Arizona will be by a tilt margin. People have been saying that this could be a bit of a wider margin. People have been saying they're worried that this state could flip. And I think that this will be very interesting to see. We saw that in 2018, the Senate election here, we saw that the Senate election flipped here more than the governor election did in Wisconsin. I think that's really important to look at. Obviously, there's other factors with it, but Arizona has been trending blue. Obviously, McCain was the home senator here. He won it by, I think, about nine points. And then it, it trended a bit towards the blue column in 2012 in a year that was pretty much all against Dems, despite the fact that they won the election. 2016, in a year that was pretty much all against Dems as well, Hillary Clinton got a four-point swing in that direction, despite the fact that also, also, obviously, there was Gary Johnson getting a large proportion of the vote, but that is debatable where, the, where that vote would actually go. And so in terms of this election, I think that the trends will continue this way. I don't think that Donald Trump is going to be able to buck the trends here, especially since you have such a uh, polarizing figure in Martha McSally running against Mark Kelly in the state. I think that's not going to go well for Donald Trump, but I think he is going to win this state narrowly, probably by around half a percentage point. Joe Biden will do better with the rural voters and the urban voters. He may be even doing what better in Maricopa County, maybe even winning Maricopa County, as well as being able to turn out enough of the Latino voters that he needs, but just not enough to get him over the top. So next we'll go to the state of Nevada. I think Nevada will go by a lean margin. A lot of people are saying that this state could be closer 
as well as the fact that the Latino voters may not want to turn out for Joe Biden. But I think that this state was considered a swing state in 2016, and then Hillary Clinton actually won. It was one of the few swing states that Hillary Clinton actually won, whereas some states weren't even considered swing states like Wisconsin and Michigan. Some polls were not even within the margin of error. This state was considered a swing state, and Hillary Clinton was able to win it. Pretty much the only swing state she won. And if Hillary Clinton could win the state, I can't see Joe Biden losing this state, especially with an economic situation that they'd be in. At this point, assuming that it doesn't completely recover by that time, that'll be something you can attack him on, whether it's his fault or not. And I believe that that state will go by a lean margin. Next, Nebraska's second will go by a lean margin. I don't think that there's much chance that it'll flip, but it'll be closer. Iowa will go by a likely margin. I'm almost going to put this as a safe margin. We have some polls here that showed it by about 10-point margin victory for Donald Trump. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be that far. Off. I think that a lot of people who did vote for Bernie Sanders will actually vote for Joe Biden this time, but I think that it would be a likely margin becoming more like an Indiana and Ohio becoming like Indiana. Obviously, Indy becoming like Missouri. A lot of these states have become a lot more red than they used to be. Now we'll get to these very important states here. I think first we'll start off with Ohio. I think Ohio is going to go by a likely margin as well, probably by around six to seven points. This state did go to Donald Trump by nine points. I don't think he's just – I don't think the farming – the farmers might not be – some of the farmers might not be upset with him. It could hurt the local economy with the tariffs and everything like that, especially with the economic situation that we're going to be now in because of the coronavirus. This is going to hurt him in Ohio, but I think that he won't be able – Joe Biden won't be able to turn out enough of the voters that he needs while also flipping the voters who don't want to vote for another establishment Democrat candidate. So the state of Ohio will go to Donald Trump by a likely margin, becoming more like an Indiana which it used to be a swing state, is now no longer a swing state. The state of Minnesota, before we get to these three very important states, this is important too, but I think that it is going to go by a lean margin to Donald Trump. We saw that Amy Klobuchar was very popular here. She endorsed Joe Biden, and Joe Biden was able to win by a pretty substantial margin, and everybody thought Bernie Sanders would, and the Bernie Sanders voters wouldn't turn out for Joe Biden. But Joe Biden is actually doing well in the state of Minnesota in terms of the Democratic primary, and I think that you know he won. It hasn't been in uh, hasn't been red since 1984. I don't see why it would suddenly go red now after Trump losing it by 1.5 percent in 2016 uh, and losing two big Senate races here by large margins in 2018. So I think that will go by a lean margin. I think that there is a chance that it could flip, but I just don't see that happening. And then we'll get to these very three important states. I think we'll just do them all at once. Wisconsin's going to go tilt blue. Michigan's going to go tilt blue. And Pennsylvania is going to go tilt blue. A lot of people are saying, oh, you can attack Joe Biden on the trade thing in, in those places. You can attack him on, on certain other things, the Affordable Care Act, and things like unions, stuff like that. That's what Bernie Sanders has been doing all, all of last week in Michigan, and then he loses every single county. Joe Biden has been able to consolidate some of the older Democratic voters, the in terms of not just old age, but the voters that used the Democrats used to get, the working class white voters that did not vote for Hillary Clinton, did not vote for in the primary or the general election, and Joe Biden would be able to get some of those voters back, especially in a tough economic situation where you think, oh, why don't we get someone who was around during this good economic time eight years before who can bring us back to the, the period of normalcy if we have such a bad economic situation now. That is what will go through the mind of voters, and that is what is going to push Joe Biden over the top with an electoral margin of 278 to 260. And these states are traditionally liberal states, too. They hadn't been red since 1988, and that was a long time before. This was the blue wall, and it's going to take a lot for Trump to be able to win it again. He isn't leading in any of the polls in pretty much all the states he's been winning in a couple but not by the margins he needs to be. And Joe Biden is winning in most of these polls by pretty substantial margins. And I know you say, oh, the polls were wrong in 2016, but you know you still have to kind of base it off of that. His approval ratings are not very good either. And I think that these, since the fact that these are traditional blue states and they did go against the Republicans in the 2018 midterms, you might see a similar thing like that if there's a bad economic situation. I think that's important to look at, which will make – the overall electoral map, as I said before, 278 to 260 to Joe Biden, which will make Joe Biden the 46th president of the United States, defeating incumbent President Donald Trump, and he will become the new president, probably with a pretty bad economic situation. And I know people want to say, oh, we won't have a bad economic situation. It's looking like we will. And even if it gets better, it's not going to fully recover to the point that it was from what it is now. And, yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as always, and I will see you guys later.